Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Continuation of the Ezekiel series. We're going to do chapter 41. This should be read in conjunction with chapter 40, Ezekiel's temple. Here we go. Ezekiel chapter 41 and verse 1. Afterward, he brought me to the temple. Aha! Afterward, he brought me to the temple and measured the posts, six cubits broad on the one side and six cubits broad on the other side, which was the breadth of the tabernacle. Now, the temple, uh, originally they had a tabernacle, but eventually... Uh, Solomon built the temple, which was destroyed and then rebuilt under the, in the days of Ezra and Nehemiah, which was destroyed again in 70 AD by the Romans. And the first temple was destroyed by the Babylonians, the second one by the Romans. And would you believe that both temples were destroyed on the same exact day? I think God the Father was giving the Jews a little teeny tiny message there. They don't like uh, discussing that particular fact, but uh, and I only recently discovered that. Believe it or not, that was kind of a shock to me. I, I didn't know that was destroyed on the same day. Of course, they'll try to tell you, no, it was the next day. It wasn't the same exact day. It was the day after or the day before. No, it was the same day. So, verse 2. And the breadth of the door was ten cubits, and the sides of the door were five cubits on the one side and five cubits on the other side. And he measured the length thereof, forty cubits, and the breadth, twenty cubits. Then he went inward and measured the post of the door, two cubits, and the door, six cubits, and the breadth of the door, seven cubits. So he measured the length thereof, 20 cubits, and the breadth, 20 cubits, before the temple. And he said unto me, This is the most holy place. This is the most holy place. After he measured the wall of the house, six cubits, and the breadth of every side chamber, four cubits round about the house on every side. And the side chambers were three one over another, and thirty in order. And they entered into the wall, which was of the house, for the side chambers round about, that they might have hold, but they had not hold in the wall of the house. And there was an enlarging and a winding about still upward to the side chambers, for the winding about of the house went still upward round about the house. Therefore, the breadth of the house was still upward and so increased from the lowest chamber to the highest by the midst. I saw also the height of the house round about. The foundation of the side chambers were a full reed of six great cubits. What's the difference between a cubit and a great cubit? I have not a clue. The thickness of the wall, which was for the side chamber without, was five cubits, and that which was left was the place of the side chambers that were within. And between the chambers was the wideness of twenty cubits round about the house on every side. And the doors of the side chambers were toward the place that was left, one door toward the north, and another door toward the south, and the breadth of the place that was left was five cubits round about. Verse 12. Now the building that was before the separate place at the end toward the west was 70 cubits broad, and the wall of the building was five cubits thick round about, and the length thereof 90 cubits. Now I'm absolutely convinced that all these numbers 
have a meaning, but uh, maybe somebody with a lot more knowledge than I do can figure it out and explain it because I don't know. You know, there's a reason for everything in the Bible. And uh, some things I know, and there's a lot of things I don't know. And if anybody's looking for me to do a commentary on the book of Daniel, unless the Lord shows me something, uh, I'm not even going to go there. I consider Daniel the hardest book in the Bible. I really do. A lot of stuff in there. I just no idea. Verse 13. So he measured the house and hundred cubits long and the separate place and the building with the walls thereof and hundred cubits long. Also the breadth of the face of the house and of the separate place toward the east and hundred cubits. And he measured the length of the building over against the separate place which was behind it and the galleries thereof on the one side and on the other side and hundred cubits with the inner temple and the porches of the court. The doorposts and the narrow windows and the galleries round about on their three stories over against the door sealed with wood round about and from the ground up to the windows and the windows were covered to that above the door even unto the inner house and without by all the wall round about within and without by measure 18 and it was made with cherubims and palm trees so that a palm tree was between a cherubim and a cherubim and every cherubim had two faces a uh, cherubim is just a it's an angel uh, one, one cherubim has got four faces. And we cover that in an earlier, I think it was in Ezekiel chapter 1, if memory serves me correctly. All right, so, 19. So that the face of a man was toward the palm tree on the one side, and the face of a young lion toward the palm tree on the other side. It was made through all the house round about uh, Judah was likened unto a lion Christ is called the lion of the tribe of Judah that's about all I can offer you from the ground unto above the door were cherubims and palm trees made and on the walls of the temple the temple Now, where is Judah likened unto a lion? Well, you got to go to the book of the beginnings, Genesis. You know, Genesis is a very, very important book. I mean, it's the beginning. Uh, gene, G-E-N-E, -E, genetics. I mean, how do, you know, genetics, DNA. That's where they get it from. It, you know, a generator creates electricity. It's the beginning. It's the foundation of the Bible. You know, if you put walls up with, without a foundation and then throw a roof over it and a wind comes, uh, chances are it's going to blow over. And if you're inside, uh, you can get buried. So I strongly recommend everybody read Genesis. You know, if every believer, every churchgoer read Genesis, they would be like, when the pastor would say, oh, everybody can be saved. And people would say, hey, wait a minute. No, that's not true. Esau cannot be saved. God hates Esau. Esau threw away his birthright. And the pastor would be like, oh, where'd you hear that at? It's in the book of Genesis, you idiot. Well, I wish there was people like that, but uh, they throw people like that out of churches. So, all right, Genesis 49 of verse 9. Judah, remember, there's 12 tribes of Israel. 
Judah is one tribe. Judah is a lion's whelp. And uh, from the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He crouched as a lion. And as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? Oh, yeah. Well, listen to this, too. Uh, Deuteronomy 33, verse 22. And of Dan, well, Dan is another one of the tribes of Israel. And of Dan, he said, Dan is a lion's whelp. He shall leap from Bashan. Huh. Very interesting, if you ask me, anyways. And, of course, in 1 Peter 5, 8, Satan tries to mimic Christ. We read, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Hmm. Revelation 5, 5. And one of the elders saith unto me, well, they were getting ready to, you know, they couldn't find anybody on earth to open the book. Revelation 5.5 5, And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Now who is the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David? Give you a hint. It's Christ. All right, let's go read Ezekiel 41 and verse 20. From the ground unto above the door were cherubims and palm trees made, and on the wall of the temple. The posts of the temple were squared, and the face of the sanctuary, the appearance of the one as the appearance of the other. The altar of wood was three cubits high, and the length thereof two cubits, and the corners thereof, and the length thereof, and the walls thereof were of wood. And he said unto me, This is the table that is before the Lord. And the temple and the sanctuary had two doors. I wonder if one door is for Israel and the other is for Judah. I'm not sure, though. I'm not sure. Maybe somebody that knows Leviticus a lot better than I do understands why there's two doors. And the doors had two leaves apiece, two turning leaves, two leaves for the one door and two leaves for the other door. So evidently they're double doors. Verse 25. And there were made on them, on the doors of the temple, cherubims and palm trees, like as were made on upon the walls and there were thick planks upon the face of the porch without and there were narrow windows and palm trees on the one side and on the other side on the sides of the porch and upon the side chambers of the house and thick planks all right well that's the end of ezekiel 41 all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.